Zion, let's support our artists who are out here putting in work to bring us great music. This is Rise of Real Judah Remix, Dub, Shad, Peasy, and Louis Misery. They say I should roll a roll call to love my Hebrews, can you hear me? Say, do you really know who you are? And can you understand it clearly? Now, how could I imagine getting woke up in the hood with a pass? Going from pushing tags to dunking with hooks in the tablet, looking back. With nothing but a cook with an axe. And now we in the truth of facts is we righteous. And our book is the Dallas. They like, who the newcomers? Is that how I go now? Pulling up old pictures. Studying on my profile. From my old time. Made me humble, but I still throw down. Conversing with the boulevard. Top side in the dope high. We're face to face with a super brute. Getting ugly, no beauty. School. Make a test trying to make a flesh. Who is you for judging? This ain't man doctrine. It's irrefutable. Mode in the musical, shaking up the delusional. Forgot he rose to find in this country. Unconstitutional. Even long sentences killed by pharmaceutical. Without a clue, of borders of blue. All with them Judas got us running like Emmy Smith. They would rather have some 22. Excuse me about the aim, but they read to change the color of our savior. Raise a higher see his children start to wake up. They called everything but our name. The sons of Jake. We're from pool pit pimps to Elf Sutton. But pay this is my fault for pointing the elephant in the room. Only time I hear sounds, we got. At funerals, business as usual. Back to the programming, could be clear if I put it close caption. Dealing with the truth is what they call an old fashion. Get up new school, took a few court classes. Game like a job, but never practice on campus. Been an outcast before, I'm sorry, Miss Jackson. Your way still sleep while I Pharisees be first in peace talk. When the team's strong, nowadays I really understand. Mac would be just like trying to fly with the world on the field.
Okay. Now say, Shemaya Sha'Allah. Real Judah. I pray this holy name with some real shooters. Roll for monetary gain and my aim changed. Brought me hella pain out of game when the spirit moving. I seen brains hang cause the colors flame. So excuse me if I don't campaign. Wanna be popular in the darkness? Instead of walk alone in the light, that's a damn shame. I see a lot of people go the wrong way. Too busy focused on the wrong things. In the alphabet will come before the letter A. Since they say we calling on the wrong names. Gotta do the work while it's still day. Shall prosper hinder me. I ain't voting for a Trump or Hillary. Cause neither one of them can give me liberty. Give a damn about your album or your mixtape. I just wanna hear well done and see his face. Seeking glory from another man that's a disgrace. Get my reward when I'm walking into his place. Ugh. I ain't hold up. Real Judah. And it is so. I'm on. Now rise. Support our talented Hebrew Yatralite artists today. Go to their website, their YouTube channel, subscribe, click the notification bell, go to realjuda.com. Support them there by purchasing or donating. If there is a donation button, donate. Support our artist, Zion. Hallelujah. Shalom, Zion. All honor, glory, and praise goes to the Most High Yahweh. In the name of Yahusha Hamashiach. Welcome to another video, brothers and sisters. And I'm doing this video here as... A reminder to a lot of you uh, who Mystery Babylon is and who is Babylon, period. Uh, it's not a mystery to us anymore, but it's mostly a mystery to the world. And there is key information that was missing for us to get the final understanding of Mystery Babylon or even Babylon the Great. So it's going to be a little mixture of the two. Now, a lot of you come across a lot of people saying Mystery Babylon is the Vatican or uh, uh, the Islamic world or, you know, there's many narratives out there who the Mystery Babylon harlot is, the mother of harlots is. And you'll know who the harlot is according to scripture uh, if you look at all the attributes of the harlot itself and uh, you will see that there is a system in place that has hoard the whole world in filthiness, unholiness, unrighteousness, fornication, pornography, adultery. They're like Sin City. They're like Sodom and Gomorrah. And they have brought this underneath the guise of being righteous and holy people. A civilized people and they brought this to the whole world you will know mystery Babylon by its fruits and what the father has said they would be like in these last days so I'm just gonna touch on it uh, to those who would want to hear and Babylon resembles Nimrod's Babylon, where they had this one tower that they was trying to reach heaven on. That was one of their goals, was to overthrow heaven, to take heaven down, to be the deities of the world, 
and this these these group of nations of people they have this same goal which is to be the rulers of the world rulers of the what they call the galaxy or the universe that's what they call it uh, this outer space that they have inadvertently taught us in these school systems so that their great deception may come upon the world and the narrative of the Holy Scriptures would fall. Now, here's another one where Mr. Babylon the Great is these kingdoms here, according to what they're saying here. Now, a lot of y'all know Mystery Babylon is a group of nations. It's a group of people, and it has its political and, and religious system tied together as one. And it has went out and destroyed, killed, stilled, and destroyed following the likes of their father that they follow and unholiness and wickedness it stretched its arms around the world all right let's get into this mystery babylon now remember i'm just touching on this i know a lot of y'all research this but there are certain things you got to understand about mystery babylon so let's go to the scriptures. Um, let's check out Revelations first. Revelations 17 and 5. Okay, well, should I go up here? Now let's start with one. And there came one of the seven angels which had the seven vows and talked with me, upon, saying unto me, Come hither, I will show unto thee the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon many waters. This is a great whore. And her kingdom is in many nations, with whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication. And they loved getting in bed with this woman. They loved it. And the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. Drunk with all the whoredoms, pornography, uh, homosexuality, um, just a manner, all manner of filth that has been poured from her cup since she has risen to take over the world. It's all manner of filth, lying, killing, stealing, destroying, not only the people, but the earth itself and, any, and, and the creatures of the earth that the Most High has made. They have drunk of this wine and they have turned on the word itself. So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness and I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet colored beast full of the names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. And that's why you got all this blasphemous doctrine entering into the Hebrew Yahshua like community because they are drinking of this beast doctrine as well some of them bringing in the mystery school stuff into the into the Hebrew awakening some of them are bringing in to bringing in the uh, sacred geometry and frequencies into the Hebrew awakening some of them are bringing in this queen of heaven doctrine mother earth Gaia type spirits all up in the Hebrew awakening uh, I, can, the, I can go on and on of the blasphemies that are pouring into the Hebrew Yashalite awakening and community because they're drinking of the beast doctrines still they have not laid down that cup and the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls having a golden cup in her hand full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication this is a cup mixed up, which the world is looking at in awe and glee and the glamour and the glitter and the money and the power and the strength and the might and the armies and the technology and 
everything this beast is glorifying in these last days. All the harlotry. You can have anything you want, do anything you want, buy even the souls of men with this beast. And upon her forehead was her name written, Mystery, Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. They have the abominations of the earth. Now, there was a rider on the white horse that went out to, to, to conquer. And there were many, there was horses that followed this beast after it conquered. There was other horses. But I'm not going to get into those horses. I haven't done revelations in a while. Zion, but uh, I'll get back into doing revelations in the future. So, who is this mother of harlots? Who has the who has given the world the abominations of the dragon that you can be your own deity? Who is this? Well, we do have to go to a different book. Let's go to the War Scroll sign. Let's get an understanding. This is Revelation 12 and 17. And the dragon was wroth with the woman, which is Zion, and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandments of Yah, and have the testimonies of Yahusha, the Messiah. Who is that? That's Zion right here. That's Zion, the house of Yahshua. Now remember, within that house, we do have handmaids and servants that are coming to the truth, who is our inheritance, and they are clinging to us. They're believing in the same Father. They're believing in the same law, such commandments. They're believing in the same Messiah. And they're coming in tune with the faith of the Most High. That's the house of Yashara that I've been trying to put across to some of you who don't want to believe. Y'all think this is a fairy tale I'm talking about, but you can, you have to go here a little, there a little to put all this together uh, and understand the first Exodus to understand our second Exodus, which is going to have faithful, holy Gentiles coming out with us. They're going to they're going to attach themselves. The Most High is preparing our inheritance for us. And those that don't know the Most High, you're going to refute this. You're going to rebuke this. You don't know the Most High, how he's going to prepare our, our Gentiles for us to come and serve in our houses and be around our children. Why would a father call in some mercenary KKK member to come work your, you know, work around your house, around your family. Why would he call some wicked teacher woman calling your children niggers and all type of stuff? Why would he prepare them to come into your house to work? He wouldn't. That's not the most high. He is preparing a righteous and holy nation of people, which includes the house of Yashara, the 12 tribes of Yashara, and includes uh, the faithful Gentiles that's going to come in with us. This is the house he's building. It's a righteous and holy house all the way around. The land will be cleansed once and for all. He's not going to invite some unrepentant heathen Gentile to come live in our land with us and serve us in our houses. That's just not the way the script is scripted out. For those who got ears to hear and eyes to see and know the Most High, you know what I'm saying is true. He did it before in the past. When he took us out of the Egypt and he purged us out in the wilderness, he purged out them same, our, our inheritance that came out with us. He purged them out too. And they came in the land and they served us in holiness and righteousness. They served the Most High in the capacity the Most High has made them to serve us. So we are his inheritance and they are our inheritance. I'm not saying all of them. I'm not talking about the unrepentant ones that's going to get all the curses and, uh, punishment and everything put upon them because of their unbelief and their un unfaithfulness to the most high that's the ones that's going to be living on the outskirts of our land 
not with us in our land. Okay, I had to explain that because there's so much deception out there. A lot of y'all don't know the narrative of the first exodus because of all the confusion. So you don't see the second narrative, the second exodus uh, that the Most High has put together is the same as the first one. The first one was a foreshadow of the second one, the completing of the second one. The first one was a foreshadow. Remember that when you go back and read the first exodus. is That was a foreshadow of the second one, which is the final purging out of Zion and its inhabitants. That's going to be in a land living with us and get an inheritance with us. So let's scroll down again. For the instructor, instructor, the rule of the war, the first attack of the sons of light shall be undertaken against the forces of the sons of darkness. The will be Leal, the beast, the troops of Edom, Moab, the sons of Ammon, Amalekites, Philistia, and the troops of Kittim of Ashur. Supporting them are those who violate the covenant. That's the rest of these nations. If you go read in Psalms 81, it will tell you all the ones who are confederate against Zion. Now, this is the Edomites at the very top of the list. They was promised to have uh, the fat of the land in the promises. And they would live by the sword, which means um, they would own all the land. Or at least most of it, the best parts of the lands, they were on the fatness of the earth. The best parts of the lands on the earth. And um, they would always be at war. That's why it said they live by the sword. They live by war. They're always warring. And they guess what? They worship the deity of war, the god of war. You've seen that video game called God of War. That's their deity. And I'm going to get to that next. Y'all know where I'm going. Moab, the Chinese. Sons of Amman, the Japanese. They love the dragon. They love the dragon. Dragon Ball Z. Bruce Lee would enter the dragon. These people worship the dragon. Y'all Y'all seen uh, their ancient relics and things that they believe in. And they love the dragon, man. The dragon is their friend. The Amalekites... That's tied with uh, Edom, Esau, Philistia, that's some of the Hamites, and the troops of Kittim, the Romans and the Greeks, are sure. And support of them are all those who got in bed with the harlot and the beast. And they're, they committed fornication with them. But these are the end time heads right here. You see them all rising up, don't you? You see the Moabites right next to Edom, rising up. Edom is tied with Kittim, the Greeks and the Romans right now. And he's tied with Moab and Ammon. So Esau or Edom is everywhere, Zion. And this is just a recap right here. Who the sons of darkness are. <clears throat> Some of you may disagree, but when you see this next one, you're going to understand what I'm talking about. Okay, before I get to the other scriptures, I'm going to go over this. Because you need to understand who the Chaldeans are. For behold, I rouse the Chaldeans, that bitter and hasty nation interpreted. This is the interpretation of the modern day Chaldeans. They're a bitter and hasty nation. Now, we know that the... um Latter, you know, the, the first Chaldeans was um, a nation of dark-skinned people. And we know that that nation isn't ruling the world right now, are they? So, this is talking about um, the modern-day Chaldeans. This concerns the Ketam. Who are quick and valiant in war, causing many to perish. All the world shall fall under the dominion of the Kittim. And the wicked shall not believe in the laws of Yahweh. This is one of the children of 
Japheth, Javan, within Javan, the Greek center Romans right here. Whom Esau is blended with, Zion. This is a group, a nation, nations of people in, in, within this group. And the whole world has fallen under the dominion of the Greeks, the Romans. It's tied in with Esau running everything at the very top. And what do they teach? The laws of Yahweh are done away with. It's easy to test this here with the uh, regular scriptures. It's easy to understand Zion. Now let's go over to the book of Jubilees, chapter 15. We start with verse 30, uh, right here at the end. But he chose Yahshua to be his people. We are his people. And he sanctified it and gathered it from amongst all the children of men. There's the separation. For there are many nations and many peoples and all are his. And over all, he placed spirits and authority to lead them astray from him. So over all the other nations, he's placed spirits to lead them astray from him because he knew they wouldn't serve them as a whole nation. They didn't serve us. They didn't serve the most high. When we, when they knew who we was, when we was in our land, they didn't make no pact and covenant with our high power to turn their whole nation over to serving only the Heavenly Father and none other, none else. Their nations of people never accepted our high power ever. I mean, as far as knowing him, and that he was a mighty, mighty Elohim. Yeah, they accepted that, but they never put away their ways, their culture, their heritage for the most highest ways. They never done it as a nation of people. None of them. Just read back in the Bible. They never did it when they knew who we was, when we was in our land. They was never joined to us and tied to us back then the most high turned them over but over Yahshua he didn't appoint any angel or spirit for he alone is our ruler and he will preserve us Zion require us at the hands of his angels and his spirits and at the hands of all his powers in order that he may preserve us and bless us and that we may be his and he may be ours from henceforth forever this is the separation, Zion. Now, he has chosen us to be his inheritance, but he has given us an inheritance of those Gentiles, nations, individuals out of those nations. Now, here's the deity of war that they're worshiping right now, which is in the current modern day Bibles that you read. And the name of the third is God Riel. As I said before in past videos, this is spelled with a A W R God Riel. This is the one that showed all the daily blows to the sons of men, and he led astray Eve. This is the one that was in the garden, led, led straight Eve astray. Remember the promise that he deceived Eve with with Eve um, being like the most high. Doesn't it seem like that same promise he promised to the, the same people that done risen up, the head of the snake, the serpent that done risen up, doesn't it seem like the same promise? They're trying to be their own deities. They're trying to live forever. They're trying to create their own utopia, their own heaven, their own everything here on this earth without the Father involved. It's the same one. And he showed the weapons of death to the children of men. Remember, Esau was promised to live by the sword. Everywhere he go, he was warring. Ever since he's risen up, he is warring around the world, and they love it. The shield and the breastplate and the sword for slaughter, and all the weapons of death to the sons of men. 
and from his hand they have gone out against those who dwell on dry ground from that time forever and ever are those who dwell on earth and they're gonna forever bring death and destruction let's go to Isaiah so when you get understanding that the Chaldeans are the same people who rose out rose up and conquered everywhere and slaughtered as they went mercilessly and called us barbarians and all manner of filthy names when you realize who the Chaldeans are you can read the scriptures anti Bible prophecy scriptures properly right here says sit thou silent and get thee into darkness O daughter of the Chaldeans this this is talking about the modern day Chaldeans like we are called the daughter of Zion this is the we are the modern day we, we are modern day Zion the daughter of Zion this is the daughter of the Chaldeans a bitter and hasty nation of people, fierce nation of continents, with fierce continents, who went out to kill, still destroy, and set up the earth for its final uh, Gentile destruction and taking of all the kingdoms. Well, not the final. This is like the clean, the final purging and cleansing out of Jacob or Yahshua, and these heathens is going to pay for all the crimes and wrath that they have uh, all the things that they have done on this earth not only to us but to all of earth itself they're going to pay for these crimes but the final battle is when Satan is released a thousand years after Hamashek's thousand year reign and he's going to deceive all those nations again and they're going to follow him straight into the pit that's going to be the final one. And the Heavenly Father is going to fight that final battle. That's the final battle. But here again you got the Chaldeans being spoke of. And now that you know who the modern day Chaldeans are. The Romans and the Greeks. Who went out into the world. Conquered all these lands. Left their mark everywhere. And all their whoredom came with them. Now you can understand these things as you're reading scriptures. Same is true when you go to Jeremiah. Where is Jeremiah? Chapter 50. And I want y'all to read chapter 50 and 51 on your own. Right here it says, The word that Yahweh spake against Babylon and against the land of the Chaldeans by Jeremiah the prophet. This is very key to understanding who the modern day Chaldeans are. It wasn't talking about them back then. It's talking about right now. And don't think they're not worshiping the same deities their forefathers worshiped in these lands. They are. It is so much to read here. But once you have the proper understanding, Zion... I'm not going to read all this here. You have to come and read about what the Most High is talking, uh, who he's talking to, and what he's saying he's going to do to these modern day Chaldeans, which is Babylon. And she was a mystery, but now she has been revealed. You know, we've been waiting uh, for this beast system to be revealed, right? And the beast, the son of destruction, to be revealed. And it has been revealed to us. See right here, let no man deceive you by any means. For that day shall not come except there come a fallen away first. And that man of sin be revealed. The son of perdition. Well, who fell away? 
Zion fell away. You see, these heathens are looking at it from their standpoint of view, their churchianity view. You can't look at it from their point of view, Zion. We fell away. Then the man of sin, the son of destruction, rose up. Now he's, he's been revealed. We know who the sons of destruction are. We know who they serve. We know now who they are. These are the sons of darkness. Here they are. Bands means armies of Kittim. The armies of the Romans and the Greeks. The son of perdition has been revealed to us, Zion. We know it's Esau and his and his um his group that is confederate with him. So with that being said. Y'all let me know what y'all think about uh, who the modern day Chaldeans are. Do you believe this narrative? Let me know. And uh, let's discuss this. You don't have to be nasty, but, you know, start turbo typing in the comment section, saying crazy things, treat me as a brother. Uh, love your neighbor as yourself. Put on the fruits of the spirit. And if it's, I mean, if you really got an issue with this, come to me in private and talk with me in private about this issue. If it's a real, real huge problem of what you heard here today. And the spirit of most High will be in the midst of that conversation if you do it the right way. And uh we'll talk about this particular subject on the Chaldeans, who they are uh, and how they fit Bible prophecy. You know, the modern day Chaldeans is the rider on the white horse that went out to ride and conquer and conquer they did. It's Esau tied in with the lineage of Japheth. Japheth was even promised to live in this tents of Shem, but look how he did it. Look how treacherously he went about it. They decided to do it that way. They didn't come live with us in peace and harmony. They forced their way in. They split throats, stabbed backs. Put diseases on people and kill, steal, destroy. Man, it's horrible, Zion, and it's not over with. With that, I'm going to say shalom. See you on the next video.